Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation. <clears throat> and well, let's go down to business. How to implement BIM in your organization. Okay, uh, in today, we're going to be covering uh, very quick. What is BIM, BRIM, SIM, all this terminology, how we can leverage our Bentley software, OpenBridge Modeler, to start the BIM model. Then this model, how we can use it after the design process has been completed. And the recommended steps uh, to implementing BIM. Uh, this is not, I would say, a personal option uh, or workflow that has worked, but then something that at Bentley we have implemented in multiple organizations, uh, local, here in the US and abroad, on how to successfully implement BIM in uh, small, medium, and large organizations. And then we're going to review how this BIM concept or BIM approach is being tackled by uh, the different DOTs here. Well, BIM is here to stay. Okay, um, we cannot avoid it. We have to do 3D modeling, and because the industry requires that, you know, the old times of plan profile cross section sheets are basically going away. Now we're pushing for 3D models in which our efficiency. Uh, and the cost of the project will uh, get reduced, the efficiency will increase. And according to Dodge Data Analytics, 70% of transportation projects will use BIM by 2019. What is BIM then? BIM is not a software. So BIM is not just a technical solution. Actually, BIM is a workflow. It's a workflow in with all the resources get together, right, for getting information about a facility okay, that combines from the beginning of the structure, from the very beginning of the structure to the entire life cycle, from existing all the way to uh, conception, design, construction, inspection, and maybe all the way to the commission. That is BIM. But then we have to build a 3D model, right? We assume, or, or the industry says that, oh, yeah, you have to do BIM, so then we have to create a 3D model. But before doing all of that, we have to say, what kind of 3D model we want? What is the purpose of my 3D model? And then it comes this concept of level of detail or level of development. Do I need a model for just mere visualization and maybe marketing purposes? So I don't need a low precision or accuracy, I just need a graphical representation of it. No, 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 I'm going to have this 3D model for all the way to construction, what we call 4D modeling. Well, so you better have the proper information inside the model to allow me for that. And then the industry, re the industry recognizes that I need to specify at what level of detail or level of development I want to take that 3D model that I'm going to create. On this example for a bridge, for, for example, if I want to say, I need to see in my 3D model, not only the shape of the beam, but the reinforcement inside and the pre-stress ducts inside that beam as well. So I'm saying LOD 400, okay? level of development 400. So that's what I need to represent. Or no, I just say, I want to see the physical properties. It's concrete, and this is the modulus of elasticity. This is the uh, Poisson module. Physical properties. I don't even need to know the shapes. So it's a very simple LOD 200 and everything in between. So not only we need to say, what is the purpose of my 3D model, but at what detail I want to develop that 3D model. Recognizing that, then we go BIM, right? And then we have been doing BIM almost for 30 years, right? Actually, we don't call it BIM. We just did 2D drafting. And then on top of that, we did a model for visualization purposes. And that was BIM too, if you want to call it like that. Then the next step, we also collaborated, right? We provide information from roadway to bridge, from roadway to drainage, geotechnical to roadway, geotechnical to bridge. So we exchange information, we collaborate. And we're trying to establish a common format between these applications. DXF, DGN, DWG, 
XLS, TXT, DOC. <laughs> so it was the whole alphabet suit of formats on trying to collaborate. But the real BIM, right, BIM3 or BIM, is when we create a single model for the entire project, share and federated. So this is not a mega model, it's just a shared model, a federated one in which everything is referenced to each other. That enables true collaboration. And yes, I'm the owner of my own information. Being the drainage engineer, for example, the bridge designer cannot change the location of my inlet. And the bridge designer cannot modify the roadway profile. But I can read that information. I can read the super elevation of the roadway and apply it to my bridge. The drainage engineer can read the information of the profile, the cross slope, and place the inlet at the proper elevation. That is the real beam. Then after that, into the model, we can incorporate time analysis. We can incorporate construction scheduling. So we're talking about beam four, beam five, when we apply cost management to that same project. Beam six, we apply facilities management. So then, the bridge in this case is already built, and then we need to establish the construction, excuse me, the inspection and maintenance operations. Using the same model, adding at every single step on the life cycle more and more information into that model. Now, we also have to recognize that we have, right now, we have kind of a disconnected bridge design process, right? We don't talk fluently and sometimes with the same language between, for example, roadway and bridge. The software that roadway engineers use is not the same as bridge designers use. I cannot read their information. They have to give me a set of plans. They have to give me a printout in which that information I manually transfer to my design software. And I'm constantly updating the information trying to find out if I have the latest profile, the latest calculation of the super elevation or not. And while maybe the roadway engineers create a 3D model of the roadway, and somehow they create maybe the 3D model of the bridge, I have to remodel this bridge because my structural calculation software doesn't use that model, so I have to redo it again. And there is no common format. Now, with Bentley, we have a common format. And that format is the MicroStation file, the DGN file. So different applications like OpenBridge Modeler, OpenRose Designer, EcoSim Building Designer, Pro Structures, they all write into a common platform, and that is the DGN file. So how to apply BIM in your organization? I think you already have BIM. If you're a Bentley user, you are inside the BIM concept already. What happened is we haven't established the connection yet. How Open Rose Designer can transfer information to OpenBridge Modeler. Or you may have inroads or Geopack. What that information can be used for the, uh, with the, for the bridge designers without sending them a printout. You may have Libridge Concrete. So you receive that information in a printout. Oh, you have to re-enter again in Libridge Concrete and then perform your structural calculations for the bridge. And if you already have the plans, well, I need to do detailing, rebar detailing. Oh yeah, we do it with MicroStation, right? Well, there is a tool called ProStructures that can automate all that practice. And if we are consultants, maybe we just stop there, you know, delivering the plans, delivering the model. What about after that? What about the inspection? Oh, they may have to re-engineer the project again because the software that they use, uh, it doesn't read the DGL file. We have to translate it to another format. Well, we have software that can read that. As many DOTs, for example, use Inspect Tech for the bridge inspection operations. So with the software that you already have, you can apply what we call our integrated data flow in which the communication is fluent both ways. As the roadway engineer is designing the geometry of the project using Concept Station, Open Road Designer, Geopack, Inroads, MX Road, he can transfer that information 
to the bridge department, in which they use Open Bridge Modeler to model the bridge. And as they are modeling, they decide to transfer this model to the calculations, lead bridge, RM bridge. Or maybe that same model, they start with the standard detailing. And then when they receive the design information, they just update the detailing. So the operations go back and forth. There is no need to remodel. There is no need to re-enter that information. So for us here at Bentley, on the bridge division, on the BRIM division, the software, the center of all of that is Open Bridge Model. That is where you start the creation of a BIM model for a bridge. And this is what you're going to do. Okay, so there is no more visualization on one side and analytical calculations on the other. It's just one model. And with OpenBridge Modeler right now, you can create a pre-stress girder bridge, complete deck, beams, foundations. A steel girder bridge that could be a straight or curve, roll shapes or built up, or a segmental bridge, even with the different construction types, span by span or balance cantilever. And that 3D model, it will be parametric. So any changes in plan profile, the bridge will just adjust to it. You need to modify the elevation of a foundation. The bridge will just adjust to it. So what we create with Open Bridge Modeler is the beam model, the physical model, and then after that, we will transfer that to the analytical calculations. Having all these different foundation types, and as I said, that physical model, that BIM model that you create, it will be transferred to the analytical software. Now, depending on the bridge type that you create, it will be maybe lead bridge, concrete, if it's a pristress girder bridge, maybe it's a segmental one, a more complex bridge. So, well, RM bridge will take care of that. And the connection, as I said before, with that integrated workflow, is back and forth. So I can just conceptualize my bridge in OBM or Open Bridge Modeler, send it to calculations, perform the calculations. Maybe that Astro 3 that I pick it's, doesn't work. Maybe it have to be an Astro 4. So I change that in LibreBridge Concrete. Run my calculations. I prove that this Astro 4 beam works for my bridge. And then I send it back to Open Bridge Modeler. And that model will get readjusted, remodeled with an Astro 4. Now, how I design, of course, using the latest code, right? The latest code that LibreBridge Concrete, LibreBridge Steel, and RM Bridge have. And as I said, if it's a concrete bridge, a pre-stress girder bridge, you will use LibreBridge Concrete. Following the concept of the right tools for the right job. If it's a steel bridge, obviously, I will use LibreBridge Steel. And if it's a more complex bridge, a segmental one, when I will use RM bridge. Now, as I said, all of this is done in the microstation environment. This is Open Bridge Modeler. So these are the bridge tools right here at the top. This comes with a platform that resembles microstation, or actually our roadway software, right? But, but this is where you concentrate. As a bridge designer, a bridge modeler, if you want to call it that, like that, this is where you concentrate on. And then you just decide, I will do a bridge. Right? All that information that you see on my screen right now, all of that is all reference. All that information is on a reference file. So I'm reading directly the roadway information the survey information, because that contours was provided by the survey department. And then I just need to say what type of bridge I need to do. This is the alignment and profile I'm going to use. So there is no more printouts or asking for a specific format. The roadway engineers already created that in their geometry file and just referencing that. The surveyor already plays the latest ground information and I just referencing that and telling the bridge use that ground information and then I start the process of creating the bridge. 
Next, how many peers is going to have? Six spans, seven spans. I just decided. What is the skew angle? What is the spacing? Remember, I'm seeing if this bridge type will work. Maybe I need to switch later to a steel bridge. The concrete may not work for some of the spans. I can switch that. Nothing is written in stone. At any time, that information that you see here, you can change it. Even when the bridge is finished, you may need to say, oh, I need to move this pier because of a utility conflict, for example. You will just move it and your bridge will adjust. And everything is parametric. Here, I'm placing a slab, right? So maybe the slab, it's not a standard width. Maybe it's not a two-lane bridge. Maybe it's a four-lane bridge. Maybe it's a single ramp bridge. So again, you can adjust this at any time using the templates that we provide, or you can create your own templates, right? You can modify a variable width deck, for example. And here, remember my work. Look, I'm doing almost everything. I'm not going to call it 2D because this is a 3D file, but I'm working mostly in top view. And the 3D model is a byproduct. Then, the beam layout, how many beams do I need? Six, seven, eight, all the beams are the same. Are all the spans the same? Well, it's up to you how you wanna lay it out. What is the spacing? Maybe I need to flare one of the beams because of a widening. Well, you just select that and create your own framing plan. Um, save it, and uh, you have the beam layout. And then after that, to that green lines that represent your beam layout, you assign the beam types. What beam you want to select? Well, up to you. We provide that on the library. You can also create your own beams and the geometry of your own beams. Uh, now, where the beams are supposed to go? Oh, yeah, below the deck, of course. Right? That's it. Now, what we're placing here are microstation elements, solid elements, right? But this doesn't matter. For you, it's not a solid in microstation. For you, for the model, this is actually an Ashto 3 beam with certain concrete properties placed below an 8 inch deck, not an extruded solid across the microstation file. So that is the idea of a beam model. We don't recognize it. Well, yes, internally we recognize it. it's a microstation element, but it's not a microstation element for you. It's an abutment with five piles of certain geometry. It's not just a prism, an extruded solid. Now, it's a pile, it's an abutment, it's a deck, it's a beam. Later, it's going to be a foundation, or it's a pile cap, it's a circular column, it's a combined footing. That's what we place. And that is the true nature of a beam model. So this is not just a 3D model or a pretty picture. It's actually a bridge, a beam, a true beam model of the bridge. And that's how we create it. This is the starting point of a beam model. And as I said, this could be a pre-stress girder, you know, in a more complex scenario, that could be also a segmental bridge. On a segmental bridge, well, it's a little bit more complicated because what is the method of construction? Span by span, Balance cantilever, well, you have to select that and place it. How many segments you need, what is the width of each segment, what is the separation, what is the construction joint, what is the closure. So all of that you can define. So you are not doing just mere graphics. You are placing a real bridge okay, and creating all of that. And this is the modeling part, right? Uh, but then when you finish the modeling part, right, specifying the construction stages and all of that, so then you can say, oh, I need to design this. So segmental, oh, send it to RM Bridge. You don't need to recreate the model. You don't need to re-enter that information. That model that you create is transferred, is send it to RM, and it's going to be performing the calculations there. Right? So now, what is the next step after that? Well, the next step is, I finished the design, so what do I do with it, right? 
But then all of a sudden, after I finish my 3D model, I receive the utilities information, right? That they always arrive sometime, right? So we say, okay, and I see this red line. It's a utility kind of too close to my bridge, right? So that's on a reference file because the utility engineer just placed it there. And as I said, it's kind of close, but how close? Is it conflicting with my footing, with my piles? Well, I can use the tools in OpenBridge Modeler, a tool called Clash Detection, to verify how close it is. Can I build it? Should I continue the design process? Should I continue the plants production process? Do I need to realign the entire project, maybe? So I create a clash detection job, and I say verify the level symbology. That's the easiest way to do it. The levels check the level symbology of my peer and peer lines. <laughs> Right, these two, and check it against that utility line that I have that actually is on a reference file. So check it against the entire file and show me where it's closer to five feet. Process it, and I got a problem. Right, the distance is too close. Actually, it's a foot, three feet too close to the footing. I can isolate the problem, verify it, right? And certainly I can demonstrate that I cannot build this. Luckily, I discovered it here in my desktop rather than on the field, right? I stopped the design process and say, well, what is the next step? Can I move the utility? Maybe that will be too easy, but it's a water main, impossible. So I need to move that pier line, right? So in a normal scenario, I will have to basically redo the entire project. New geometry, new design calculations, new modeling, right? But here I say, I'm going to move it there. So I place a line myself for a reference, right? And then I go with OpenBridge Modeler and detect what is that pier line? that I need to move. And I can select it on the screen. I can go here, for example, and go into Project Explorer and verifying the bridge and see what options do I have. Or I just go directly to the select option and say, move this peer line that I have from here to that line that I just already placed. Done. I have no utility conflict anymore. My model will change. So it's just a matter now to send it to design again and have the reports for the new geometry computations. So one usage. Now, this conflict has been solved. I can produce plans now, right? And the holy grail of BEAM, apart from using that in construction and inspection, is to generate plans. Right? Still, we need to submit plans. Still, still, we need to sign and seal something. So, how we do this? Well, from the 3D model, we can create this. Okay? We can just go and say, okay, I need, I have my 3D model, it's done. I verify the design. So, everything works. So, I can start the plans production process. And using that, I can just say, well, that isolate the peer. Right, and then with a single button, I can say, Well, set this up, it's already the dimensions, the styles, and all of that for the proper plans production. And I say, Just create a peer sheet in this case, define the size, the frame that I'm going to use, and Little by little, I'm extracting sections, dynamic views, as we call it in MicroStation. And you assemble your own sheet. This is not a cut. This is not a copy. This is an actually reference from the 3D model. So if your model changes, that will change. 
Okay? And that's how you start composing your sheet. I also mentioned about detailing operations, right? You may have pro structures already in your practice. So we recognize the 3D model. And while recognizing the 3D model, we can open the 3D model, the bridge 3D model in pro structures and start the detailing process. So we recognize that this box is a footing and as such, we just select what rebar layout I want, what hooks I want to use, what standards I want to apply, you know, the American standards, the Florida standards, the California standards, you know, the Brazilian standards, you got a project there and that's it, you got a 3D model of the rebar being done with pro structures. If your model changes, the rebar will move. This is part of the 3D model. Plans production, cut a section, cut a dynamic view. And when you cut a dynamic view, you can quickly set up a sheet with that. You can start with the columns. And then at the end of the process, as I said, right, you can just say, cut me a sheet. Reference me a sheet, if you want to use that word, and that's it. Now you have a 2D plan from your 3D model, in which these are just not lines. We know that it's a rebar number eight, space, such and such. And knowing all of that, right, we can start the annotation process, but then also we can compute quantities. We can give you the shop drawings just from the 3D model. And that will finish my design process, right? What, what else? What, what about for the contractor? Okay. Well, to the contractor, they can tie the entire project if they want with their gun chart, Microsoft project or Primavera, and then optimize their construction operations. Okay. Assign the tasks that they have in their gun chart, assign it to a graphical element, to your model, and decide how I'm going to build this, right? What for me is the most efficient way, the less cost, the least cost that I can take to build this project and optimize my design, optimize my construction process, I'm sorry. And then place it on timeline and see if this is going to work with the equipment that I have, with the manpower that I have. So just connecting the gun chart, right, through the design process and play it and see, oh, this is the way I'm going to build it. First, the piers, second, it will be the inlets, then the pipes, then the abutment, and so on and so forth. And then after that, all that information, it can be transferred to a 3D model, to their 3D model. Now. So on the field, what you need? Oh yes, I need to have all the software that Alex, you showed me. Open Bridge Modeler, Pro Structures, um, Open Rose Designer, Primavera, Microsoft Project. Uh, no, all that model gets packed up into an I model and send it to the field with all the properties without losing any information. And you can open it in your iPad if you want with Bentley Navigator. So your inspector, your contractor will see that intelligent information that started maybe way at the very beginning with that single red line here as alignment and profile all the way to a 3D model. Now, the challenge is how we implement all of this, right? And this was all these software solutions all these uh, security of information that I need to establish. How do I implement BIM in for your organization? And this is what we recognize. They call it the eight pillars of BIM. And we have seen some of them, right? We know that we need to collaborate, right? And how are we gonna collaborate? Do you agree that we have to collaborate through email, FTP site, even SharePoint? I don't think so. We need a tool for a real electronic data management, Bentley, project-wise. That information, how it's going to be managed internally during the capital expenditure pro, pro, uh, phase. 
Then after that, how is going to be managed during the operations? What is going to be the protocol of information exchange? Do I allow of import and export operations? Transferring from one format to another? Do I realize that I may lose information? What are the steps taken to prevent that losing of information? Or maybe I use one information exchange, DGN. How we're going to establish that security of that information during the design process? Can anybody copy a file and take it somewhere else? Can I take a USB drive and overwrite the information on the server? Or at a higher level, can I take all the design plans and give it to somebody else? Remember, bridge is a very sensitive structure. All geared to what? Why are we doing all of this? Because we want a better outcome. Least cost, better efficiency, right? Better you know, uh, lifetime of the actual project itself. And all of that guided under what standards? Who defined the standards? In the US, it's mostly the DOTs, right? But then what about if we go international? What standard we need to follow? Not only for design, the design could be the Euro code, the ASH to LRFD, but what about the other standards? How we represent the information? how we transfer that information, how we read that information. So you got to consider all of that steps in order to implement BIM first. And then, remember, this is not a software problem, okay? With these eight pillars of BIM, BIM and software, what I presented you today is just one piece of the puzzle, the software part. The workflow, I cannot tell you the workflow because every organization is different and you have to work it out how it's going to be done in your particular organization. What is the budget you have? What is the equipment? What are the regulations that you need to follow? The DOT, the state, county, city level, country level. What hardware is available to you? Do you have the qualified personnel to handle all that information? And what are the policy requirements? All of that is part of the BIM effort. So, at least, what I consider to be the keys to moving forward with BIM. Okay? First, I think we need to agree that we need BIM. Even if it's forced to us or not, we need to agree that we need to adopt a 3D design methodology. Right? That we recognize that, yes, technology is necessary, but it's not sufficient. BIM, that is my personal opinion, is not a technology problem. It's a personal problem. We need to change the way we work. And by human nature, change is difficult. So we need that stakeholder buy-in. We need it. Let's move forward. Then we have to start planning. Before buying any software, before buying equipment, how are we going to do this? Okay. And what goals we want to achieve in the short term and the long term? I see in many international projects, for example, that they say, we're going to implement BIM all the way to the life cycle of the structure, and we're going to do BIM 6, BIM 5, sometimes without knowing what it's BIM 5 or BIM 6 entitles to. So, plan, plan, plan. Then, what standards you need to follow? Standards provided by the agency, standards provided by your own organization and follow that standards okay there is no special case or special project try to adhere as much as possible to the standards because what you set up today for design it will be carried all the way to construction to inspection so you need to develop some standards and it's not just as easy to develop the standards. Oh, we use that from standards created 10 years ago. No, these are new set of standards. The standards that we use, well, myself as designer, I use design standards, CAD standards, without thinking of what's going to happen in construction. I want to inspect this. 
So it's a standard that need to be thought for the entire life cycle of the bridge. And then find the proper people, right? Your internal champions. Who's going to be the individuals or the design teams with the knowledge, drive to take this effort to the end? Okay. Now, not only that, but then do a pilot project. Okay. Don't do a project that is due in a couple of months. Because, as I said, there is no specific workflow that I can tell you you need to follow this. Every organization is different. The available of personnel and equipment is different as well. So try to do a pilot project. Doesn't need to be big, doesn't need to be too small. A project that you know that you're going to find problems. And that is the key, because you're going to work it out at King's. Enhance your workflow and make it be available to your organization. That's the idea. Then, training, training, training. Okay, not only software training, Bentley training, if you wish, but training in the workflow. How are you gonna share this information? That is internal training. But this training needs to be accessible, needs to be on demand as soon as you need it, right? And then applicable to whatever you're doing. It's a training on the software that I need, training on the workflow, training on the security of information. So training, training, training. And then, yes, the holy grail, implement this. You have, have developed your proper standard, have the key personnel doing BIM, they are already well trained, and now you're ready to implement it in your first real project. And then you have to involve not only the designers, you have to involve the contractors, the inspectors to see what information you need right? and trying to stick as much as possible to the plan and schedule that you created. Okay, now you want more information and actually I would say a real case scenario that we apply in the UK with the Crossrail project. Uh, my friend, Ian Miskemen, was reading actually a book on what is all this beam talks about why you need to implement it, what are the advantages and disadvantages, what are the kinks that you have to work out. So it's published by Bentley, you can find it in Amazon. So it's a good read, it's a good read. And then we know that we are not alone because, right, BIM, as I said, is to stay. These are more or less the duties that have Bentley software, Bentley civil software. They have been having this software for years, but now they are going to beam solutions, 3D deliverables. Okay. Some of them being so proactive that they sometimes they're saying, we will not require plans. We want the 3D model as a deliverable. They're testing that. Some of them, they're still in a mix. I need the 3D model and the plans. Others say, well, deliver the plans. It's a contractual document but we will just read the 3D model. So, as I said, 3D models, BRIM, BIM, SIM, all the terminology, it's here to stay. And let's start implementing this. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. And for that, I will uh, just stop sharing my screen. Uh, Todd, you're there? Yeah, thank you, Alex. And uh, just want to take a quick moment here before we begin the Q&A session. Uh, I'd like to invite you as the participants to take a short poll. And based on today's presentation, would you like to be interested in being contacted by someone uh, to discuss your project needs or to schedule a demo with us. Okay. 
just going to keep this open for one more moment here to let everybody respond. All right, thanks everybody for your responses. Uh, now I'm going to hand it back over to Alex to uh, continue on with the Q&A. So if you do have questions, please go ahead and type them in uh, the Q&A box now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Uh, so uh, please, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to type it in the um, question and answer. Um, I think it's, it's open, right? Yes. Show all questions. Yes, yes, yes. So you can type your questions, please. Uh, I have uh, one already coming up. I mean, it's, it's typing. Uh, let me see. Uh, I got one here that says, is there any beam standard in the US? Uh, well, there's, uh, there's a beam standard that organization are using. Uh, personally, I'm familiar with the standards, for example, set up by the US Army Corps of Engineers, but these are more for building projects. Uh, for roadway, okay, there's no standard per se regarding BIM, as you saw on the previous uh, slides here, that some DOTs are adopting this, and they are trying to accommodate their current standards to follow a 3D deliverable. So. Oh, there is no standard per se. Federal Highway Administration is pushing that as well. It's driving all this effort. And I recommend you to go to their website, uh, the Federal Highway website, under the Everyday Count workshops, uh, and in which they are promoting that beam effort among the, the DOTs. EDC, Everyday Counts. Uh, well, that's question on OBM. So does OBM work on its own or does it need a micro station in the background? No, no, no. This is built on the power platform. So Open Bridge Modeler does not need micro station in the background. How can we use OBM and such for rehabilitation of existing bridges without a total redraw? Well, uh, there have been, um, what can I say, different efforts, for example. I mean, one way in which we combine existing and proposed, uh, I would say well, you can redraw, quote unquote, redraw uh, with Open Bridge Modeler your entire bridge because it's very quick to do it. So you can do that. Okay. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to really depict that conditions, um, we have a software called Context Capture. Right, so because you need to show the 3D existing structure, so you can create a 3D model of the bridge okay, by taking pictures. So these pictures will get assembled by Bentley's context capture and create a 3D reality modeling of your bridge. It could be reference and move, it's a real bridge. And then after that, you will apply side by side, I would say, OBM and connect with that bridge. So that's another like um, uses of mixing context capture, maybe even drone technology with open bridge model. Oh, thank you, Gary. Uh, any thoughts on a presentation for seniors management to convince them to moving on the department to this philosophy? <laughs> uh, yeah, as I said, you see, it's. BIM, adopting BIM in your organization, it's, as I said, it's a, a people's problem because it's difficult to change, you know, especially large organizations. You know, it's like trying to steer an ocean liner through the, through the sea. You know, it takes a while to make a turn. So, yes, we need the buying of all these participants from the technician, designer, all the way to upper management. Uh, but I think the the push also is given by organizations like Federal Highway, which they are pushing for 3D technology. They are providing the funds for 3D technology. So that's another way maybe to push for that move. And also the, the contractors as well. The contractors, they, they benefit greatly for a 3D model. Rather than re-engineering the project, they can just continue the workflow. 
I recently met with a, a contractor. I don't want to say the name, of course. And they say when they receive the project from the DOT, they receive all that information. And what they do is it takes a month to re-engineer and place it in the format they use. A month. And then they can start the construction operations. So why don't receive what the DOT give you in a 3D model and just start using it? So maybe by next week, you can start breaking ground rather than re-engineering and recalculating the entire project again. Okay, so that's uh, another advantage of implementing 3D model. Are DOTs specifying the software to be used or they allowing the design to decide what BIM software will be used? Well, the DOTs that I mentioned on my screen or that you show on my uh, PowerPoint, they have adopting Bentley. You know, some of them, they cannot force you to use a specific software, but they can recommend you to use. Uh, for example, I'm based in Sunrise, Florida, and the software of choice for Florida DOT is Bentley, MicroStation, Geopack. You have to design with Geopack. Uh, or you can also use Civil 3D. So they give you both options, you know, but for many, many years, the, the standard and the preferred one uh, for consultants as well was Geopack and MicroStation, right? Not in roads, Geopack. In other states, maybe New York, they are in roads, but then all of them are moving for the true beam software that is open roads design. Last week I was in West Virginia, for example. They are not, they are moving directly to open roads designer and all 3D modeling. So, uh, it's some of them, as I said, they are not forcing you. They recommended the software to be used. Oh, can the reality modeling be converted to OBM elements? No, no. The reality model, what it creates is a 3D model, but it's a reality mesh. So it's a mesh that it converts. Context capture creates a mesh in 3D. And OBM can be attached to it, but it cannot be converted to an OBM element because at the end, the open bridge modeler element is a microstation element. Okay, but it's a microstation element that has a little bit more intelligence. As I said, it's not a solid. Well, yes, it's a solid, but it has concrete properties, steel properties embedded in that. So I hope that answers your question on that. I got another question here. Are DOTs asking for BIM projects? Not yet. Officially, not yet. Okay. Uh, for example, here in Florida again, uh, you can develop a 3D model, right? Because it's part of the design process, but you are not obliged to uh, send it to the DOT as an del official deliverable. But then a lot of DOTs are thinking of doing this, requiring the 3D model as part of the deliverable of the project, not just plans, but then the challenge is how we check them. So it's, it's they are on that also liability problem. So they are thinking all of that, but then they know that they have to go 3D. All these DOTs that are showing my PowerPoint, they are moving to 3D in all different phases and flavors, I would say, uh, but they know that a 3D model is to their advantage. How does open bridge compare with ECOSIM for modeling bridges? Well, it doesn't compare because ECOSIM is designed for bridges. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> ECOSIM is designed for buildings, right? So, uh, yes, you can model a bridge even with plain microstation if you want, right? But for example, plain microstation, does it read alignment profile cross sections? Does ECOSIM? Right? Design for bridges. Know what the station offset elevation is? Profile, cross section, super elevation. So open bridge modeler does that. Open bridge modeler reads roadway geometry, calculate super elevation, deck elevations report, beam seat elevations report. So as you know, you can model anything with any software. What we propose at Bentley is using the right tool for the job. And the same concept applies when we have Libridge Concrete, Libridge Steel, RM Bridge. Why three bridge design softwares? The right tool 
for the jump. Simple concrete bridge, lip bridge concrete. Steel eye girders, boxes, steel, lip steel. Segmental cable stage suspension bridge, RM bridge. The same. Open bridge modeler for bridges, echo seam or vertical structures, buildings. Oh, thank you, Gary. He, he works for a DOT. Oregon DOT has started requiring the model for earthwork and paving. As you can see, yep, 3D model is here to stay. Question here, what is the assumed increasing efficiency on the design cost? 60%, 75% bear, compared to conventional design workflow and 2D plans. It will be bold for me to give you uh, a percentage because as I said before, every organization is different depending even on the type of bridge that they use or the type of work that they use. Right? Uh, it has been a study, I think, uh, let me recall uh, by, uh, I think it was Wisconsin DOT, in which they compare the 2D workflow all the way to 3D workflow. So actually they did the project twice, 2D and 3D deliverables. And I think they realize between 6 to 10% of savings in the total construction co cost. Construction, not design. Construction. Okay, so that could give you an idea that uh, how much money you can be saving. Okay, and the efficiency too. Okay. And again, that all depends what the DOT asks you to deliver. For example, you want to develop a 3D model. Yes, you can do it with MicroStation, right? Because that's what you have. Try to do a bridge with MicroStation and try to do the same bridge with Open Bridge Model. How much time it will going to take you? Maybe a week with MicroStation? Or maybe 15 minutes with Open Bridge Model. And then modify the profile. What's going to happen with the MicroStation design bridge? What's going to happen with the Open Bridge Modeler bridge? So, as I said, it could be a, a, a great in, if, a increase in efficiency, but as any organization is different, you know, um, a percentage is variable. And the key is that that's the purpose of this presentation. How you going to implement BIM in your own organization? At what level you want to take? At what level you will be comfortable of increasing efficiency? Okay, so it's actually up to you to respond. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, maybe I entertain uh, ooh, the last one. Uh, time is on. How Bentley help us in implementing BIM? How we can help you? Well, you got, uh, for example, you want training, right? I mentioned in my uh, presentation that training, training is the key. You know, we have opened the learn server. Before it was a subscription, now you can just log in and get any training available on the learn server. So there is no excuse of not training actually even yourself. So training is fully available. We have these constant presentations, tech talks, a special interest group, uh, the learn conference that we did it uh, we, maybe a month ago in Phoenix, Arizona, was Roadway and Bridge. They've got tons of information regarding BIM and the current practices, state-of-the-art software there. Um, also, the implementing BIM itself, uh, well, we have a professional services in which we can travel to your organization and assess your workflow and provide you with um, a specific path in your own organization on how to move from a 2D practice to a 3D practice. So the tools are there. Uh, well, you have us uh, as technical personnel available, so just contact us and we just uh, work with you in your specific case.